few months ago, I got super into the field of synthetic biology, which is essentially modifying the genomes of organisms to get them to do whatever we want them to do. And since it's February of 2021 and the world is still crazy out there, I decided to bring the lab into my home by getting this CRISPR kit from the Odin and modifying E. coli. So I'll be going over what I did and mistakes along the way. Let's go. The first step is to make our LB agar, which will be the food for our bacteria. And the one I'm making right now is a normal LB agar, but I'll also have to make one with strep, can, and arab, the antibiotics, which I'll be going into later. So essentially just mixing powder with water and microwaving it until we get this transparent translucent solution and then we have to cool it down however i do not recommend putting it in the snow because i did this a second time and the bottle cracked once our agar solution is cool enough to touch we can start making the plates which is where our bacteria will grow Next step is to create competent bacteria where we first have to pipette some sterile water into our E. coli bacteria to dissolve it. But first, what is a pipette? You can think of a pipette as a really specific eyedropper. You push down to push out the air and create a vacuum and let go to suck up the liquid and then push down again to release the liquid. Here's the second mistake I made. I contaminated the pipette tip with the E. coli bacteria. So now I have to change the tip um, to continue pipetting the sterile water. So make sure when you're pipetting to keep the tip above the container so you don't contaminate it. Just using the pipette to mix the water and bacteria. Now I'm pipetting our dissolved E. coli onto our LB agar media. and using the large end of an inoculation loop to streak out the bacteria. Bacteria grows best at 37 degrees Celsius, so I put the plates in this makeshift incubator, which in fact did reach 37 degrees overnight. Now we'll be making our bacteria competent meaning that it'll be able to intake foreign DNA. And to do that, we'll be taking our freshly grown bacteria and mixing it with PEG-8000 and calcium chloride. And fun fact, PEG-8000 is actually what they use in COVID mRNA vaccines. First, pipetting some of the calcium chloride and PEG-8000 into an empty microfuge tube. This was yet another mistake I made. Uh, in this specific experiment, when scooping up bacteria, it would be better to use the small end of the inoculation loop. Since I used large end, it literally could not reach the bottom of the microfuge tube. Before I get into the DNA transformation and bulk of this experiment, here's a quick CRISPR explanation. Bacteria and other organisms need proteins to survive, and proteins are manufactured by ribosomes. However, in the new agar plates that we'll be using, it contains a molecule called streptomycin, which binds to the ribosome and prevents it from making proteins, thereby killing the cell. The goal of this CRISPR experiment is to make a specific mutation in the ribosomal subunit protein, RPSL, um, to prevent streptomycin from binding to it and allowing the bacteria to grow on the streptomycin media. Cas9 is a protein that contains a guide RNA, and uh, Cas9 will search along the genome of the bacteria to find a specific place where it matches with the um, guide RNA. And at this specific spot, CRISPR will cut at the site that matches the gRNA, and through homologous recombination, a new template strand of DNA is inserted. Now with a change in one amino acid, streptomycin can no longer bind to the ribosome and it can successfully make proteins. Now back to the experiment. We have our competent DNA, Cas9 protein, 
guide RNA, and DNA template, and sterile water. Here I added 55 microliters of sterile water to each DNA tube. And now adding the Cas9 plasmid, and gRNA, and DNA template to our competent bacteria mixture while switching pipette tips in between. Sending the mixture to cool down for 30 minutes in the fridge. Now we're going to perform a heat shock where we take the mixture directly from the fridge and put it into 42 degree water for 30 seconds. And this is unusually hot for the bacteria, so it forms pores in its cell walls, allowing the Cas9 system to enter. Next, we'll be pipetting some cell food, LB agar, into our competent cell mixture and allowing it to incubate for one to four hours to recover and replicate the DNA. Finally, for the last part of our experiment, the final exam, we'll be streaking our new, hopefully CRISPR modified bacteria onto agar plates with antibiotics such as streptomycin. And if it survives, that means the CRISPR experiment was successful. Sadly, my CRISPR experiment did not succeed. The bacteria did not grow on the streptomycin agar. And my guess would be either because we did not measure the temperature super specifically because we didn't have a glass thermometer, or because we didn't mix the three components of the CRISPR um, one by one. We just like added them all together. But I'll try this experiment again, and if it succeeds, maybe I'll make another video to update y'all.